Hi, elephant friends. It's Miss Jill. I wanted to try a new way of doing a read aloud with you guys. This book is called On Beyond Bugs, All About Insects. Now, I'm always going to ask you the same thing. Remember, what part of the book is this, friends? It is the cover or the front of the book. If you flip it over, what do we have? We have the back of the book. And then we have our spine. I hope everybody said spine. And I hope everybody can tell me who writes the words. The author, the author writes the words. And who draws the pictures? The illustrator, the illustrator draws the pictures. Now, right here, it'll tell you. This book was written by Tish Raby, and it was illustrated by Aristides Ruiz. I may have not said that name correctly, but I tried. And I'm sure you guys recognize who this is. Who is that, friends? Is that the cat in the hat? It sure is. And I thought this would be a great book for us to read because we are studying insects. And this is a pretty good book to give us a little bit more information. So let's take a look. Everybody can see that pretty well. I'm the cat in the hat, and I'm glad that I found you. Right now, if you look, you'll see insects around you. They live in the water, the earth, and the sky. Just wait, and you'll soon see an insect go by. There are millions of them. I will show some to you. Your mother will not mind at all if I do. Oh, friends, look at this. Most insects you'll meet have hard shells and lay eggs. They have wings and can fly, and they all have six legs. Spiders aren't insect. insects. This news couldn't wait. Instead of six legs, every spider has eight. And we talked about that a little bit yesterday. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nope, not an insect. This big guy right here is a praying mantis. And I do see six legs, one, two, three, four, five, six. He also has these little things right here. Do you guys remember that those are antenna? And then he also has three body parts. He has his head, he has his thorax, and he has his abdomen. And here we have a butterfly, and I know you all know this is a ladybug. Here's a grasshopper, and here is a black ant see what else we've got going on the next page. If you look at an insect up close, you will see that its body's in parts and each insect has three. First the head, then the thorax, and here at the end is the longest part, which is called the abdomen. So here's our head, here's our thorax, and the abdomen right down here. This is a cricket. See his really long antenna? Insects cannot see all the things that surround them, so they each have two feelers to touch what's around them. Here they are. Some people call these feelers. The correct word is antenna. An insect has feelers on top of its head. Some look a lot like a thin piece of thread, while others look much more like feathers instead. And then look, thing one and thing two are down here and they say, we wish we had feelers, but we don't have any. You can also call feelers by this name, antennae. Watch an insect and see all the things that it does. Some can swim, jump, or crawl. This is a diving beetle. It's a flea that is on our dogs and kitties. This is a pipe vine caterpillar. And he only has six legs. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's pretty cool. I did not know that that caterpillar could be an insect. Others chirp. Others flash or buzz. So this cricket is rubbing his legs together to make a chirping sound. This is a firefly or also called a lightning bug in some places around the country. And what a bumblebee say? Buzz. 
Birds and frogs look for insects in order to eat them, so insects work hard to make sure they don't meet them. Some, like this wasp, have bright colors that say, don't come near me, I'll sting you, so just stay away. This moth's wings are colored to look like the tree it is resting upon so that no one can see it. This is called the underwing moth. This spittle bug sits and he spits out a bubble. It's wet and it's cool and can save him from trouble. Look at this, it's called a spittle bug. And you see right there, he's spitting out little bubbles. For when he's all covered in bubbly foam, if a hungry bird comes, it thinks nobody's home. So look, he flew by the first time and he saw, he thought he saw something he could eat. But the spittle bug blew out his bubbles and now the bird can't find it. So now the bug won't get eaten. That's pretty clever. Here is a riddle I learned from my mother. How's a skunk and a ladybug like one another? When danger is near, it is easy to tell. They suddenly give off a terrible smell. I did not know that ladybugs gave off a terrible smell. Did you? I bet it's not a smell we can smell. I bet it's a smell that only other insects can smell. These busy insects are my friends, the ants. They like to eat seeds, other insects, and plants. Ants are so strong, they can lift things that weigh over 10 times their weight, and they do it all day. So if you were as strong as an ant, you would see you could lift up 10 cats in tall hats easily. I don't think I could do this. But these ants sure can. They are super, super strong for their size, aren't they? Watch these honeybees, and I'm sure you'll agree that these bees are as busy as busy can be. Worker bees collect food, and they keep the hive clean. They protect it from danger and wait on their queen. She must stay in one place. It is her job to lay dozens and dozens of eggs every day. So here we go. These are the little worker ants, I mean, worker bees, and they keep, they protect the hive, and they protect the queen so she can lay all her baby bee eggs. When a bee has discovered where food can be found, she goes back to her friends and starts dancing around. First she wiggles, then she waggles, and circles and so. All the other bees know which direction to go. We can grow lots of flowers with help from the bees. They store dust from each flower in the back of their knees. This dust is called pollen. Next flower they find, when they land on it, they leave some pollen behind. This is called pollination, and it makes the new seeds that grow even more flowers, which everyone needs. So look, there's the pollen. And the bee flitter, 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 flitter flies over to this one and leaves a little bit of that pollen from this one over here. And that's called pollination. That's how other flowers grow. Some insects I know can be unwanted guests. Fleas, flies, and mosquitoes can really be pests. Fleas live on cats, dogs, rats, hamsters, and mice. Their bite is quite itchy, which isn't too nice. Oh, look at all these poor animals. Mean old fleas and flies and mosquitoes. But they're wonderful jumpers. Why, if we were fleas, we'd jump over our house and we'd do it with ease. That's how these guys get to go from one animal to the other because they're really good jumpers. You guys think you could jump over a house? Have you ever wondered why does a fly buzz? Well, it beats its wings fast and each time that it does, its wings make a sound you can hear in your ear. And this sound lets you know there's a fly flying near. Here's a fact about flies that we both thought was icky. They can walk upside down since their feet are so sticky. I have to say, I think walking upside down would be kind of cool but not if my feet were sticky. I don't think mosquitoes are very polite. When they're hungry, they land and they sting when they bite, but it's only the female mosquitoes that do. Male mosquitoes will never come bothering you. I do not like mosquitoes. I don't know anyone that does. Caterpillars do something you might think is strange. They start out as one thing, then one day they change. 
Some spin a small house on a branch just like this, and this hum that they make is called a chrysalis. So here, the caterpillars inside here, they spun a little tiny house around themselves, and this is called a chrysalis. Can you guys try to practice the word chrysalis? Chrysalis. If you watch it, you'll see when a few weeks go by, it turns into a beautiful new butterfly. Thing one and thing two have a quick fact for us. It says, here's a quick fact that we both thought was neat. Butterflies can taste their food with their feet. How interesting is that? I do not suggest you all put your feet in your food. I do not think your moms and dads would like that. On warm summer evenings, you may see the light of fireflies flashing off on in the night. They are like tiny flashlights that float in the sky, and if you want to catch them, it's all right to try. Use a jar with a lid, watch them glimmer and glow, then open up the jar and let them all go. They look like little tiny stars flying around. All day and all night on the ground in the air, insects are moving around everywhere. It's important for us to keep learning about them. The world that we know couldn't go on without them. The butterfly, ladybug, ant, and the bee make everything better for you and for me. The end, my friends. I hope you enjoyed reading on Beyond Bugs all about insects. And I will see you all next time. Bye.